Uh, actually, before I read on, I need to uh, give you one other example of, of why we need to be involved in understanding other worldviews and being able to refute them. And this goes back to a study that was done here in the United States in the 1960s by an individual named William McGuire and, and others. And what he was doing was it's called inoculation theory. They were studying this whole aspect of how do you change somebody's opinion on something or somebody's strongly held belief? What does it take to get that kind of change? And they set up an experiment with college students and they decided to take something that was you know, somewhat innocuous. They couldn't try to change somebody's you know, religion, for example. <laughs> that would be too unethical. But they, they thought they would take something that you know, what wouldn't have long-term repercussions in the life of the individual, but something that people believed in. Uh, so they came up with the idea of trying to convince students that brushing your teeth is bad for you. <laughs> because most students agree that brushing your teeth is good. So they thought, well, let's see what it takes to, to change their mind in that area. So they set up this experiment, and they were going to have the students go into a room and read an article that had a, a series of comments about why brushing your teeth is bad. And there were pseudoscientific kinds of things that were listed, such as brushing your teeth wipes away the saliva, that's a natural deterrent to tooth decay and things like that. So, uh, you know, things that sounded pretty good on the surface. And they would see uh, how many students would change their mind. So they gave a pretest to find out how many students strongly believed that, uh, or mildly believed that brushing your teeth was good. Then they had them read the article, and then they had a post test to see how many had changed their mind. Well, then to further develop this, because they were looking for ways to keep from uh, students changing their mind about a certain area, they, would, they were trying to find out what, what techniques work the best. So one group would go in. The first group would simply go in, and they had no preparation at all. They just went in, pre-test, read the article, post-test, and a certain amount would change their mind, as they found out. Then they had a second group where they reinforced their prior belief. Their prior belief was that brushing your teeth is good. And so before the group went in, uh, the person that was uh, leading the group would just say, oh, by the way, uh, you're going to read an article and uh, just want to let you know that brushing your teeth is good for you. So just a little reinforcement of what they already knew. So that group went in and took the post test. Then the third group, they warned that they were about to be attacked on their belief. They said, you're going to go and read some, uh, an article that is going to give you reasons for why brushing your teeth is not good. So they just gave a warning, but that was all. Then another group, they gave a warning plus a refutation. In other words, they said, now here are some of the things that you're going to read about. And they would detail some of those and say, this is why those reasons are not really good. So they gave a response to it. They said, by the way, you'll probably, you might read some other things that we haven't had time to go over or are not aware of. But just be aware of these areas that we've covered. Now, out of these four groups, which do you think had the least amount of change? Group number four, yes, most people say that. And that is absolutely right. Which do you think had the greatest amount of change? Most people say group number one. But guess what? That's not the case. Now, let's look at, first of all, group number three was next. They had a little more change but uh, then the, the group number four. But group number one did not have the greatest amount of change. They did have more change than group three and four, but the group that had the most change was group number two. Do you know why? Because they were the group that had been reinforced in their belief. They were given that little reinforcement. Oh, by the way, brushing your teeth is good for you. When they went in and read these scientific sounding arguments against that belief, they thought they'd been lied to. And so literally, they attached an emotional attachment to that, to their response. And because of that emotional attachment, they changed their opinion in greater numbers. And what's interesting is after this whole experiment was over, obviously, those that were running the experiment would go to the students and say, oh, by the way, this was all an experiment, and everything that you read was not true. We made it all up. And so they had to, to deprogram the students that had changed their mind because they didn't want them going around not brushing their teeth the rest of their life. What's interesting is that group number two was the hardest to deprogram afterwards. Because they, they, even though they were told that it was all made up, they, they had that emotional commitment that was just beginning to be a part of their life. 
Now think about this and the ramifications for just a moment. What's been your experience growing up in your youth group at church? For the most part, what I find is that, that much of our Christian education is surrounded around the idea of just, number one, looking at the Christian view of life. And we're not given any, uh, we might be given a little bit of warning, but, but very little refutation of other worldviews. We don't understand the other worldviews well enough to know where their weak points are. And for the most part, we're given a reinforcement of our prior beliefs. You're sent off to college and, and you're told, well, just love Jesus. You know, be strong in the Lord. You know, keep the faith, baby. That's not going to hack it. And then what we see happening is that Christian students who claim to be born again as freshmen, as I said earlier, is as high as 60% walk away from the faith because they hear arguments that are very convincing. They sound logical, rational. They sound enticing. And they have no way to refute them because they've never been told. 